Palm Sunday. You know, and, and um, sometimes I'm politically incorrect. And sometimes I am religiously incorrect. But I just want to read this to you. I, I thought it was interesting. Matthew 21, that talks about uh, Jesus' triumphant en- entry into uh, Jerusalem, what we refer to, you know, in the, on the religious calendar as Palm Sunday. And it says this, uh, you know, as prophesied that he would sit on a donkey and, and, and so forth. And it says they, they, they brought the donkey and the, po- the colt and they laid their clothes on them and they set him on them. And listen to what it says, a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others, a few others, cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. There were actually more garments on the road than there were palms. So I just wonder why we didn't call it Garment Sunday or Clothes Sun- Sunday. <laughs> I know some people are going to get offended at that. But anyway, um, but here's the, here's the point I wanted to make. You know, he, he comes into Jerusalem, and it's a great celebration. Uh, and really, the whole point of Palm Sunday, if you want to refer to it that way. In fact, you know, y'all got your palms? Y'all brought your palms with you? Let me see your palms. Let me, let me see your palms. Lift your palms up. Come on, palms up. There you go. There you go. But uh, the whole... Uh, understanding there is the celebration of the king of Israel. Amen? The celebration. And that's what we do, not just on a Palm Sunday, but on every Sunday. And, and, and literally, for all of us, it'll all be every day of the week. Amen? We lift in our palms up. Amen? And worshiping the king of kings and the, the Lord of lords. Amen? And, and so anyway, there's a lot of focus on uh, you know, the, the triumphant entry, and, and, uh, and that's awesome. You should read it and, and, and participate in it every day of your life. But, um, you know, have you ever thought about what he did after that? You know, he comes in, and, and everybody's celebrating and, 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 and joyous and, and having a great time, and he's the king and so on and so forth, and um, multitudes of people. So it says, and when, the, when he came, I'm, I'm reading uh, Matthew 21, chapter, uh, verse 10. It says, and when he came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this guy? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Now, it would have been awesome. You know, he could have stopped right there and said, all right, I got a mega church. I'm going for it. You know, just I'm not going to get offensive to anybody. I'm not going to say anything politically incorrect. I'm just going to, you know, enjoy the crowd. And it says, then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and and the, the, the seats of those who sold doves. I mean, if you want to, if you want to mess up your crowd a little bit, you know, you start offending a whole lot of people. And it wasn't just words, man. I mean, he was driving them out, driving them out. I mean, they probably got some people a little upset, you know, because the love of money is the root of all evil, right? And uh, when he started messing with their money, uh, it wasn't good. But it didn't stop there. It didn't stop there. And he said to them, it's written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And you made it a den of thieves. I tell you what, Jesus was religiously incorrect. Just 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 tell you. But here's the part that I like. Here's what I want to uh, touch on just a little bit today. We've been talking about healing and God's will to heal. And it says this. He has the triumphant entry in and then he throws everybody out (laughs) that was doing the wrong stuff. But then it says Verse 14, then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. And he healed them. Everybody say, and he healed them. The blind, the lame came into the temple and he healed. They came to him, I should say, in the temple and he healed them. Now here's the religious mindset at the time. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. And they said to him, you hear what they're saying about you? 
And Jesus said, <laughs> see, now, now, now most, most preachers would probably say, oh, well, you know. <laughs> but Jesus said, yeah, I hear what they're saying. <laughs> and then he goes on to quote scripture. He says, have, have you ever read this? Hello, have you ever read this? Hey, religious minds, have you ever read this? It says, how do the mouths of babes and sucklings he has ordained Praise, uh, the new J uh, King James says, uh, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. And he left them. And he went out of the city. <laughs> How many you know, uh, we, 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 we so put Jesus in a religious box so much of the time. He was not religious. I said he was not religious. He was extremely spiritual, <laughs> but he was not religious. And his, his biggest problem when he walked the earth was religious people that saw things differently than he did. Can you say amen to that? So he went out, or he didn't go out, but I mean, he was in the temple and they came to him and he healed them and he healed them and he healed them. So again, we've been talking about, uh, is it God's will to heal all. Amen. Is it God's will to heal all? Uh, and so go with me to uh, Mark chapter five. Let me just uh, uh, touch on this and, and we're going to uh, have communion. I know some of you were probably looking back there to uh, receive communion, but we thought we would do it together. You know, uh, this, this is a, a week where we you know, honor the resurrection and so forth and what Jesus has done for us. And so I thought we would have uh, communion together today right at the end of the service. Amen. So anyway, Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, again, I'm reading from the, the New King James, in case you uh, follow along. And um, starting with verse 21, it says, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. Now, obviously, he's asking the question that we have referred to, you know, uh, uh, if it be your will, you know. In other words, he's saying, uh, uh, begging him, you know, to come and, and heal, come and heal. And let me know, there's no hesitation whatsoever on Jesus' part. It says, so Jesus went with him. So Jesus went with him. I, I, I want to say it. I want to say it over and over again. And, and let me just, you know, uh, 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 say this, that what I am, you know, imparting to you, what the word is imparting to you is not just for you alone. There are people out there that need to know that God is a good God. He's a God of love. And he wants to heal people. Amen. So Jesus went with him. And a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Have you ever been thronged before? Some of you think thronged? No, thronged. Have you ever been... That went right over your head. Have you ever been thronged? In other words, there were so many people crowding around him that he could barely move through the crowd. You know, it's like you've seen... Uh, you know, sad to say, you know, in, in, in crowded situations, whether it's a riot or it's a football game, you know, uh, people just so close together, you know, bumping into each other and pushing each other and so forth. That, that, that's the picture here. So it says, great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. How many know we all believe in doctors? But how many know they don't always have all the answers? Can I get a better amen? amen? So it says she had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Now, how many know, if you know anything about the, uh, the law, it was not allowable. It was totally illegal. It was against the law. She could have been stoned for having an issue of blood and, and, and going around anybody in particular. Just, just she, she was not allowed to get near anybody because of the blood flow. 
And yet, she made her way through that crowd. So she suffered many things. Many physicians spent all that she had, grew worse. But when she heard about Jesus, everybody say she heard about Jesus. That's why it's so important that people hear about Jesus. You know, we think sometimes that America is the most uh, preached to country in the world. So we don't need to tell anybody. I have listened to people that said all their life they never heard anybody talk to them about Jesus. But we think everybody's heard it. You know, we think, well, there's Christian TV. Obviously, you know, everybody watches Christian TV. No, they don't. You know who watches Christian TV? Christians. <laughs> Once in a while, you know, people will tune in. Thank God for that. They will tune in and they'll hear something and, 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 and they might accept Jesus. And that's awesome that that happens. But for the most part, people don't watch Christian TV. Hello. So how are they going to hear about Jesus? Well, they turn on Christian radio. That's how, no, 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 not necessarily. I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people. Even when they leave church, man, they got, you know, on the radio. I mean, they're not necessarily listening to Christian music either, but, or preaching. How are they going to hear about it? It takes somebody, somebody like you, somebody like me, to tell them, to talk to them about Jesus. Anyway, she heard about Jesus. She came behind him in the crowd, and she touched his garment. For she had said, everybody say, she said. For she had said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Are you listening? If only I can touch his clothes, I shall, I will be made whole. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Just like that. Isn't that awesome? And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Now, again, we're talking about, is it God's will to heal, right? Are you with me? Is it God's will to heal? How I many know she didn't ask him if it was his will or not? Amen. And Jesus didn't know who it was. Now, I know, you know, some people, again, they, they, they go, well, Jesus was God on the earth. And no, the Bible says that he lay aside, he laid aside his deity. He became a man and he walked this earth as a man that was anointed by the Holy Spirit. I know that's hard for us to, to grasp sometimes, but that's the reality of it. He did not use his divine powers in the sense that he was God on the earth. That, stay with me. He used the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came in. You know, go look at it yourself. He did not do one miracle until he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then he went around doing good, healing all that were oppressed by the devil. I want you to know that that same Holy Spirit can fall upon you and has fall, fallen upon many. Amen. And that is what enables you and I, just like it enabled Jesus, to heal the sick. The anointing was upon him. John says, you know, you have that anointing. It abides in you. So he had the, the anointing of God on him, but he didn't know who it was that touched him or else he'd be lying. Come on. How many know God cannot lie? Jesus could not lie. He never sinned. So, you know, for people to say, well, he, 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 he would have known because he's God. No, he did not know. He didn't have a word of knowledge. He didn't have anything like that. He did not know who touched him. Are you with me? And so he says, who, who touched me? Who, who touched my clothes? I felt power go out from me. But his disciples said, hey, you see the multitude that's uh, thronging or crowding around you? And you say, who touched me? In other words, there's so many people touching him that, you know, there was no way to figure out who, who actually touched him by faith. And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. I mean, she probably had, you know, a, a, a 
guilty looking face, you know, like, oh my God, they got me. <laughs> the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her. Now, you just imagine what's going through this woman's mind. First of all, she is totally illegal being out there. And then she gets caught getting healed. <laughs> How do you want to get caught getting healed? Amen. <laughs> she gets caught getting healed and she's like, oh, my God, they're going to know, you know, because I'm sure people knew who she was and knew that she had this problem, you know. And she's in fear and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Now, how many know when a woman tells you the whole truth, it's the whole truth. I mean, it is all the truth. I mean, everything's thrown in, you know. It's just like, you know, uh, men, you know, they go out to work during the day and they come home and the wife is at home and she's taking care of the kids and making dinner and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, you know, the wife would say, well, how's your day? He said, yeah, okay. But most men are smart enough to not ask her, how was her day? <laughs> you got to, right? <laughs> Because she would tell you the whole truth, amen. Well, I, you know, in the morning, we'll be doing this, and then, you know, the kids, you know, I got to do the laundry, and then I have a problem with it. I mean, they will, they will tell you the whole truth. I hope I didn't offend any ladies, but I'm just saying. Women, women talk a whole lot more than men do. It's just, it's just part of the nature, you know. you got to get men to talk sometimes. It says, but the woman, the woman told him the whole story, the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Wow. Wow. See, listen, Jesus didn't have a chance to answer any question about whether it was his will or not. Hello. Again, so many people, so many people are stuck on this idea that God has to make a decision about whether he wants you well or not. And we have been religiously deceived for many years that God uses sickness, disease, pain, tragedy, on and on and on to teach us things. Come on. Now, as I said before, you can learn things, you know, when you mess up or when somebody messes you up, right? When you get sick, all, all kinds of stuff. You, you can learn things. I, I never forget, you know, growing up as a Catholic boy, you know, I didn't, I didn't know the Bible a whole lot. I just, I just knew, somehow I knew it was, you know, uh, imparted to me in some way, shape, or form. I, I don't know if it's all church or just whatever mindset was there, was that, you know, if you mess up, God's going to get you. You know, I, I think my Catholic nuns kind of helped me with that. Because if you messed up, <laughs> they're going to get you. They're going to get you. In fact, you know, they got me when I didn't even do anything. They got me, you know. Today they would probably call it child abuse. But anyway, uh, you know, those kids that came out of those schools, even though it was very tough discipline sometimes. I mean, you didn't want to go to the principal's office. You did, you, you did not want to go to the principal's office. But the kids that came out of those schools with the discipline, even though it was harsh at times, were upstanding citizens for the most part. Hmm? Yeah, it's true. You look at schools today, I, I, I really feel for particularly public schools, you know, particularly in bigger cities, uh, it's... So anyway, there was no question about whether it was God's will. She did not think about whether it was God. She just knew one thing. I know he's a healer. Come on, somebody. Come on, you just got to say, I know he's a healer. I know. I, I know he's a healer, and I know he wants me well. She had that in her mind, and she said it. She said it. 
She said it. She probably said it over and over again. She probably uh, hesitated to even go in the crowd because if she got it caught, she could have been killed. She could have been stoned to death. And I'm sure she meditated on this and, and, and thought about it. You know, if I go out, I mean, all, all kinds of things could happen to me. You know, and maybe I can't get close enough to him. But, but I know this, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I, I know I'm going to be made whole. If I could just get a hold of him, if I could get through just, just long enough to touch him, I know I'm going to be made hope. No question at all. No question at all about his will. That's the way we need to be. No question at all if it be thy will. If I touch him, I'll be made whole. Come on. Now, how many know, like her, we touch him by faith. Come on. Amen. We touch him by faith. He looked at her and he said, your faith has made you whole. He didn't even say it was me or my anointing. We know that worked there. But she, he said it was your faith, her faith that said, if I can touch him, I'm going to be made whole. All I got to do is touch him. Touch him. And we have, you know, with God living on the inside of us, his spirit living in us, we have opportunities any time of the day or night to touch him by faith. Amen. And let me tell you this, the word, the Bible says that Jesus is the word. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. When you touch the word by faith, you touch Jesus. In the spirit, when you touch him in worship. Amen. Awesome things can happen. Healing can happen when you touch him. Amen. Now, let me read the other part of the story here because this is good too. So it says, while he was still speaking, y'all remember J. Iris had come, right? And uh, it said, can you come? My, my daughter is dying. She's dying right now. Would you please come and heal her? And Jesus said what? Don't be afraid. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not there yet. <laughs> when, 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 when he first came to Jesus, you're reading ahead of me. Uh, when, when, when he first came to Jesus, he said, my daughter is sick. She's dying. You know, she's on her deathbed. It looks really bad. And Jesus immediately said, I'll come. In other words, it's, it's my will. I'm, I'm going to come. I, my will is to heal her and I'm coming. But then a long-winded woman slowed things down. I mean, can you imagine? You know, again, we're talking about faith, right? God's will. Imagine this man, Jairus. Huh? I mean, wh where would you be? Think about it. Think about it, right? He's got, he's got a hold. You know, he, he got through the crowd, too. He got a hold of Jesus. He got to talk to him face to face and say, my daughter's dying. Can you come and heal her? And Jesus said, yes, I will come. And then here comes a woman. And stopped everything. Yeah, that's, that's the other, you know, I mean, you, you think G.R. is a stand there, you know, and, 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 and the woman starts to, you know, tell the story, and, and, and G.R. is like, hey, hey, you, hey, come on, man, you know, and she's telling the whole story. I mean, you might get a little anxious at that point, maybe a little fearful at that point. So it says, while he was still speaking, the king, uh, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Don't bother him, the teacher, any further. It's over. It's too late. It's done. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, and let me just tell you this, as soon as you hear a word of negativity, as soon as you hear a word or a bad report, you ought to speak to that word instantly. You ought to refute that word immediately. You ought to say, whoa, 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 whoa. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, don't fear, don't be afraid, only believe. That's what you need to say to yourself when a bad report comes. You need to talk back to that just like Jesus talked to that tree. 
that wasn't producing fruit. And he said, nobody's going to eat from you. Furthermore, I mean, that's it. And that tree began to wither and die instantly. Because the tree was talking to him. You ain't getting nothing from me. And Jesus said, wait a minute, I created you. You're out of here. <laughs> you can take your, you know, however you see that thing. But I'm just telling you, he didn't waste any time at all. He said, well, you know, bye. <laughs> bye then. Okay. And uh, he immediately spoke. Immediately. 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 I said to you a couple of weeks ago, you, you need to get upset. You need to get angry when things are, are coming at you that don't belong to you. Sickness does not belong to you. Disease does not belong to you. Listen, death, although we still have to deal with that, it's the last enemy that will be uh, dealt with. We still have to deal with death, but not death too soon. Amen. I mean, everybody ought to be pushing for 120 years at least. At least. Stop listening to the news report. Stop listening to the, uh, oh my God. You know, it's like, it's like uh, uh, they come up with a new uh, drug or a new problem and a new drug for the problem almost every other day. Why? Because you're getting old, you know. I mean, you're past 30 now. You know, things start falling apart. I mean, that's, that's what the world's mindset is. And the more you buy into that, the older you're going to be, the older you're going to feel, the sicker you might be. Hello, somebody. You know, the Bible says that Moses was full of strength at 120 years when, when God took him home. God took him home, right? God just took him home. It's time for him to go home. Come on, Mo, time to come home. 120, it says he was strong and his eye wasn't dim. 120 years. Wow. Some of you think, well, okay, well, I'm wearing glasses, but so? Nothing wrong with that. Come on. But you can also believe for total eye. It's just easy sometimes to wear glasses, you know, but you could believe for living to 120 and not wear glasses at 120. Maybe your eyes just improve instead of get worse. Who knows? But let's not quit. Let's not give it. Let's not buy into everything has to just keep on going downhill the older you get. I've met some people in their 20s that go going way down the hill, let me tell you, and look a whole lot older. So he said, when he heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid, just believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult. Is that a drink? What is that? Tumult. Tumult. Anyway, they were having this wild, uh, you know, uh, grieving party. Uh, you know, back then they used to pay people to come and grieve and, and cry and so forth. Anyway, uh, uh, a tumult of those who wept and wailed loudly. And when he came in, this, this, this is how phony religious people can be sometimes. When he came in, he said to them, why, what, what all the commotion? What, why are you weeping? The child's not dead, just sleeping. And they ridiculed him. They laughed at him. They went from, oh, to, <laughs> kind of weird, ain't it? Laughed at him. So uh, he, uh, again, you know how Jesus is. He don't offend people too much. Uh, he just put them all outside. And there are times you need to put people outside. I, I know people that, uh, um, I know numerous stories, but, you know, uh, one preacher in particular um, was uh, uh, hit with a, a disease of some kind. I forget what it was exactly. But anyway, he was in the hospital, and uh, his wife said, only certain people are allowed to come in that door. Because how many you know not everybody walks in faith? How many times have you heard somebody say, uh, you know, uh, somebody will declare, well, I, you know, I got this, this is the diagnosis, whatever, oh, my sister-in-law had that, and oh, she didn't last long at all. 
Oh, that's a terrible disease to get. Oh, my God, you know, you're going to suffer. It's going to be bad. You don't need people like that. I say you don't need people like that. So you need to put some people out sometimes out of your life, out of your Facebook account, out of your phone numbers. I mean, come on. Because you don't want anybody taking down the faith that you're trying to build up. So he took the child by the hand, said to her, Talitha Kumar, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl rose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. And he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said that something should be given to her to eat. How many know there's a spiritual side and there's a physical side? You know, you can't starve your body and not treat your body well and expect it to do well, right? Amen? But I, I just think these, these stories just so, uh, just so tell us and show us and manifest to us God's will. God's will. You know, they, they said to Jesus, they said, Look, you know, if, if you just show us the Father, we'll be satisfied. And uh, Jesus says to him, um, guys, I'm going to do a message one time about um, the kind of people that Jesus picked. <laughs> it will encourage you. It will embarrass them a little bit, but it will encourage you. Because I tell you what, when I go through the Gospels and I see over and over again the way these disciples were, I mean, it's shocking. It is really shocking. You know, these are the guys that I'm going to build my church with. I'm going to leave them here. I'm going, but I'm going to leave them here. And they are going to take the gospel to the world. But when you look at all the stories, I mean, Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. And, 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 and two of them come to him and they're arguing. He said, what are you guys arguing about? They're arguing about who they thought was the greatest. Hello. <laughs> You know, he feeds 5,000, then he feeds 4,000. Then they pick up all these extra baskets, you know, uh, afterward, leftovers. Amen. And then, you know, Jesus goes with them in a boat to go somewhere. And he says, be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And they all go, oh, my God, he's mad we didn't bring bread. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> the people that, uh, you know, he... He picked and used. Amen. Doesn't that make you feel a little encouraged? You know? <laughs> Peter, you remember the story? You know, he says to Peter, who do, who do men say that I am? You know, or, who, you know, who do you say I am? Jesus said, well, I, you, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. He said, yes, heaven revealed that to you. And then Jesus says, well, you know, I'm, I'm going and they're going to, uh, uh, torture me and, and they're going to crucify me and bury me and I'm going to die and then I'm going to come out of the grave, you know. And, and Peter, uh, the Bible literally says that he shook him and said, no, it will not be so. And Jesus said to the, the, the one just heard from heaven, he says to him, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> I mean, these, these are the guys that he used to build the church and that's something. But I hope you hear the heart of God. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, if you've watched me, if you've heard from me, if you've seen my will in action, you've never seen a sick person come to me and me cast them off or tell them to come back some other time. They were always healed. By the multitudes, they were healed. It's always God's will to heal the problem most of the time is either a lack of understanding or a whole lot of unbelief or we've got stuff going on that's blocking in some way what God wants to do in our life come on but you've got to get it down deep in your heart God wants me well. 
And therefore, if he wants you well, he wants every person that surrounds you, every person you meet. Give us a little bit of uh, background worship music here. Can we get ready with the communion? We want to receive communion now. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. Now again, as we approach um, what is you know, referred to as Good Friday and towards Easter and the resurrection, he said, when you take communion, when you receive the cup and you receive the bread, crackers, whatever, and let me say, you know, if, if you don't realize this or know this, um, you can take communion anytime, as many times as you want, when you're home, wherever you are. You don't need wine. You don't need grape juice. You can use Coca-Cola if you drink Coca-Cola. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, it really, it really does not matter. What matters is that when you take that, when you drink or you, you eat, you're declaring I'm taking the body of Christ. You know, you can take a, a, a piece of a roll or a piece of bread or a donut. It doesn't matter, honestly. It doesn't matter. It's what you believe about what you're receiving. Y'all with me on that? Amen. So I want you to come and just kind of find a place up here. We'll just all take it together so you don't have to run back to your seat and, you know, spill things or whatever. Everything, by the way, has been sanctified. Everything is... is um, you know, clean and, and, and all that good stuff. So I want you to come take your elements and just stand somewhere and uh, we'll, we'll receive together.